What made him this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. Are you Bob Chandler? It doesn't matter who I am. Who is this idiot I'm talking to on the other end? Um, you got some funny ass ideas of playing games at night on the telephone, don't you? Are you six years old or something? Oh, oh, fuck God, we, got, we got his fucking dad. Shit. Hello. Hello. Hello? Who do you think you are? Who are you? You have got a issue problem. God forgive you. I beg your pardon? Who God are you? needs to move in your life severely. Why don't you quit dialing my number and go somewhere and play a game with the gutter rats? Bring yourself over here. I'll show you what's the matter, okay? Listen, boy. You get your black ass down in the gutter and stay there. You understand? I am the woman of the house, and you don't call me and ask me who my daddy is. Well, I don't know what you are or who you are, and I don't really care. But you're invading my privacy, and you're cussing at me, and I don't like it. Call my house and talk that way. I tell you what, why don't you call my husband and tell my husband that? I'll let you talk to my wife. Maybe she can talk some sense into your head. Bye. Goddamn screwy woman. Hang up on her. I, I ain't talking to nobody this time of night. Hang it up. You, you better check the numbers that you call because you're not talking to anybody that you know. You have got a issue problem. Huh? You can know my nerves. I don't have an issue problem with anybody, but please quit calling my number. The increased attention Christian had gotten resulted in people prank calling his home phone number, which he had freely recited in his videos. This issue persisted for years. Hey, buddy. On November 23rd, 2009, Christian noticed a couple of advertisements on his Wikipedia website, which he deemed undesirable. The first was a pro-gay rights ad, endorsed by the character Peter Griffin from Family Guy. And the other was an ad for a competition to win a trip to Mexico, sponsored by a pickle man dressed in a stereotypical Mexican costume. Chris contacted the SysOp, or system operator of the Wikipedia, Cogstev complaining about the advertisements. He was told that the ad space was sold to one Jack Thaddeus and provided Chris Jack's email address to contact him personally to discuss the matter. I'm feeling pissed off because I was not informed of that transaction, but I'm even more upset with the content of the ads. Please change the icon for the Mexico trip contest to the flag of Mexico and please remove the UG gay rights ad. And I do apologize for not answering your calls, but between you and me, I feel email is preferred, because I know it's you in the email address, unlike on the caller ID that comes up restricted or unavailable. If you at least told me your phone number and not let it be restricted, I would feel more likely to pick up. Sigh. Anyway, I heard you have more info on Clyde. Please tell me in your reply. On November 24th, Chris uploaded a video of his Sonic 2 PowerPoint presentation for the attention of Nintendo and Sega which had been largely completed around a year before. He recorded it by filming his computer screen with a handheld camera. All science and relationship materials copyright by me. With my proof on the Wikipedia. Zoop. Yay. No romance. He talks about the origination of Sonichu and clarifies the meaning behind his name. As for his name, well, rumored to be a comparison to Sonic, to a combination of Sonic and Pikachu, that was not the case. I originally played the name from Sonic's Japanese name, Saniku. 
He then rushes through some more origins and plot points, and highlights what sets Rose Chu apart from Sonic the Hedgehog's Amy Rose character. Amy does not have spikes on her back. The clothes are different. Her headband is white, not red, like Amy's. And Rose Chu has a modern girl kind of attitude, and lucky for her, Sanchu, re Sanchu rarely runs away from her charms. <laughs> and of course she has her electric type attacks to boot. Don't forget the tail, that's another big difference. Rose Chu is a gal who will not take any abuse from a foe lying down. She is a warrior heart standing up for women's rights. Da da da, the very first Rose Chu card. He follows up with brief descriptions of the rest of the characters in the comics, including Blake and the Chaotic Combo. This is me, Christian Weston Chandler. Like it most artists, I let myself get into my work story-wise, where in real life, I have been in search for a woman to become a true sweetheart from ground up, starting as friendship. I am also the mayor of Quickville. I deal with mate my mayor will do is over Wi-Fi with my Nintendo DS. I came up with the name of Quickville long ago, starting from the city I built and grew bigger over the years of Lego bricks, pieces, and people. I also later came up with the radio station KCWC. He continues to elaborate on the history of his websites, fame and trolling, and the powers of the Sonichu Medallion, which, according to him, grants him special powers only in the comics. First chance, Sonichu. Soldier of love and honesty. In this form, I can execute my own personal selection of attacks as a normal electric he electric type hedgehog Pokemon with keen eye ability, including Mock Punch, Thunderbolt, and Hyper Beam. As well as, as in both human and Sanji form, I am the only being who can execute the special attack that inflicts bad luck and extreme misfortune with some damage to the foe. Used to be called Curse Ye Hameha, now it's called Shin Ye Hameha! Chris Chan Sanchu, that is me, and like again, this is from the this art is to be the cover of book number ten, from my Australian gal pound fan, who was nicknamed was Panda Halo. She is dead now, and I miss her. She was a great friend. Anyway, Chris then informs his prospective business collaborators of his ideas for a Sanchu video game. This is a great start in profits from the Electric Hedgehog that started humbly from the mind of a well-rounded, church-going, high-functioning, autistic, recovered individual. Nintendo will see good profits in the time frame of the game's release. Sign you, go! Thank you very much for your time, and I look forward to working with y'all, with each of y'all, in person very soon on the Sign you project. Thank you very much, and have a safe day. Peace out! Christian then informed Vivian G that he was allegedly in contact with Nintendo, Sega, and Sony. Vivian suggested that he market himself by going to conventions and selling homemade Sonichu related merchandise in order to get worldwide exposure and a small chance that a small company may choose to support him. The following day, Christian wrote a blog post informing his audience that even though he reacted very negatively towards dishonest Sonichu merchandising attempts in the past, he had learned to accept them as homages to his work. And as long as they weren't distributing copies of his comic or his Yup, I'm on TV DVD, they were welcome to produce more Sonichu related merchandise on his behalf until he could release officially licensed products. Vivian then encouraged Christian to think of some exciting ways to promote Sonichu and suggested that he take inspiration from the video game Mirror's Edge, which extensively features a style of unassisted traversing through man made or natural obstacles at great speed called Parkour. On November 29th, Chris wrote a blog post offering some relationship advice to those attending high school. Back when I was in high school during my freshman year, during the time I was a manager of the varsity basketball team, I had a crush on one of the cheerleaders. Among the whole group though, they all enjoyed my company and good humor. Anyway, the cheerleader I had the crush on, she asked me if I had a crush on anyone. I answered honestly. Then she asked who. Blushing, I told her that I was crushing on her. She took some time to think about it, and she told me later that while she liked me as a friend, she did not see me as boyfriend material at the time. I later learned that she was two grades ahead of me. Live and learn. At least I tried. And with that, I encourage everyone to date someone to hopefully make into a sweetheart with eventual benefits. It is harder when you are a freshman, so I'd wait until the sophomore year before setting my sights on nearly every girl I saw. But as a freshman, 
if you have your sights set on someone, and you know that opposite gender person is a freshman too, I suggest looking up a role model, a cool junior or senior year student, and follow their example on asking others out, but with your own personal flair and charm. Do not totally copy your role model. And if you know someone who is without a sweetheart in high school, ladies and gentlemen, hook them up and do not make it a joke. That is just plain mean and cruel. And being mean and cruel is not cool. And if it helps, think of it as volunteer work. Most people enjoy volunteering and helping, even for an assignment or extra credit. Such kindness and concern reflects you as a better person, not some random shallow loser because it show that you truly care about others and yourself. I offer my blessings to every lucky sweetheart couple in high schools everywhere. It is true, you would never find anyone better than the significant other that you're with right now. Stay safe and stay in school. As November opened up to December, Chris continued to work hard publishing at least one new sonnet you page every day and answering more and more mailbags, often taking on an aggressive condescending tone and also leaving shorter and shorter replies. Some individuals inquired about his stance on Asperger's syndrome, with Christian angrily declaring that it has no relation to autism and that he was offended by the fact that Asperger's was considered an autism spectrum disorder. By mailbag 8, he had been receiving so many emails about Asperger's that he created the Autism Mailbag designated for all future inquiries discussing the link between autism and Asperger's syndrome, which often went unanswered. Many trolls also assumed identities of notable individuals, such as future North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, and serial killers John Wayne Gacy and Jeffrey Dahmer, all failing to grab Chris's attention. One email was purportedly from the popular male-to-female transgender porn actress Bailey J asking Chris for dating advice, with Chris commenting on her attached photo that she looked cute and pretty. On December 3rd, he recorded a video introducing the so-called parkour video that he would upload later that day. It's, uh, I ran the downtown mall track today in an effort, effort to show how, 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 I, how I feel about my science here, that I am definitely pumped up for push him out into merchandise and everything. You might say it's comparable to Mirror's Edge, the way I did it, as it will be described in the description on that page. Yeah, so anyway, whew, I got a little, I got tired from that. I tell you, my legs will be bothering me a bit tomorrow. <laughs> uh, it's bothering bother me a little bit right now, but anyway, I'm mad enough to admit that, and you know, yeah. <coughs> oh, how you been? man up to admit that, you know, after the matter, after I go back to my car, I even came down with a bit of the hiccups. <laughs> and it happens to the best of us. Hopefully you enjoy my run, my French word, whatever, my parking, I think it is, uh, whatever it is. But anyway, the science use edge. Peace out and have a great day. Soon after, Christian uploaded a YouTube video of himself performing what he called parquet confusing the challenging physical discipline of free running with a brand of squeezable margarine. Hello there fans, this is Christian Chandler here live at the downtown mall where for the science year franchise in the city of Quickville and everything like that, I'm going to do a parquet from this point all the way down to the garage, parking garage where at the end we will get a nice view of the tent style theater that's down there where events are held. Have for best viewing the camera will be hung around my neck right about here. So you get to see what I see from that point of view. And also, uh, there may be one or two pauses where I have to catch my, my breath. Of course, that's what's expect, even from the best runner. Alright, here we go. Chris straps his camera around his neck and begins running. There are six jump cuts in the video, which can be assumed to be Chris's rest periods, which he edited out of the finalized video. On average, he took a break from running every 30 to 40 seconds. The video itself actually does not feature any attempts at parkour and is solely a running video, with later calculations estimating that he ran 579 meters in around three and a half minutes. The amphitheater. Thank you for your continued support. 
In addition to the parkour video, Christian went to the mall and allegedly found some people who claimed to know of Sonichu, and asked if they would oblige to do a video interview to raise awareness for his original character. After informing Vivian that he had a select few lined up for interviews and reactions to Sonichu, the video that they discussed never materialized. Overwhelmed by the continuous comparisons of Asperger's and autism from his fans and critics, Christian attempted to set the record straight by posting an official statement on the Wikipedia, clarifying his opinions on the topic. Asperger's is nothing at all like autism. I've stated this fact over and over again in my replies to messages from people who tell me otherwise. I feel very sick and tired of hearing that false rumor that the two are anything to full similar. Firstly, I can verify that I was diagnosed with autism with papers in my parents' filing cabinets, and more current and immediate within my reach. I have the papers from my most recent psychiatric evaluation on November 5th, 2004. Mr. Chandler is a 22-year-old man with a history of developmental delays and autism. Despite these limitations, he seems to have been quite successful in maximizing his academic abilities. Despite his significant delays in language, he has over the years developed relatively effective communication skills. And with that, I've not only helped cultivate the first generation of autistic people, but I've gone beyond the autistic dreams academically, communicatively, and socially. Still, I've trouble maintaining eye contact. My mentality is sometimes slow, yet quick at other times. The people who first evaluated me ever even stated that I would never even make it to high school, much less even write his name. Take that and smoke it, oldest doctors. I've worked very hard to achieve and maintain honor roll throughout middle and high school, and even to make the PBCC's dean list, and fulfill my parents' wishes to work for and earn the degree and certificate for computer-aided drafting and design. And those with Asperger's dare to try to take the shine and limelight away from us autistic people, not only with their social flaws and such possibly similar traits to autism, but to shun us autistics by being better communicatively and mentally than us. I have received a message from one who dared call me normal in comparison to him. If anything, the Asperger people are and have been normal. They think they can one-up or even match autism with the lack of social capability and their clumsiness and such. Those characteristics can be faked by them who are most normal compared to us true autistic people. Even their title is flawed. Asperger's. It can be misconstrued into a most terrible cut of meat from any animal even something that can be picked nasally. I fought long and hard to make a stand for the autistic people. I will most certainly not let those imposters steal the true original title of autistic from any of us. Victory over autism belongs only to us true autistic people. His issues with Asperger syndrome heavily inspired one Alec Benson Leary to create Asperchu, a webcomic series parodying Sonichu and Christian. The main character, Asperchu, was physically an amalgam of both Christian and Sonichu, with most of his personality traits being based on Chris, though some details about his life were intentionally twisted in order to rile up Christian. For example, he had Asperger's syndrome rather than autism. He liked to hang out with his group of male friends whom he called Joy Boys. He played video games on an Xbox, and the seven Sonichu balls were replaced with seven Chaos Pickles. The comic also featured appearances from other Sonichu characters, and even Chris himself, who was renamed to Ian Brandon Anderson. When Alec Benson Leary first started making the comic, he sent it to Christian asking for his opinion, but none was forthcoming. An email from Benson Leary made an appearance in Mailback 10's rejected section. Why have you not responded to the truly amazing comic I sent you? I am referring of course to my one true and honest creation, the original Asperchu, the electric slash Asperger's type hedgehog Pokemon which I recently showed to you as a token of my esteem for you. I think you are perhaps scared and confused by my rise to greatness. If I knew you were ever to be worried by my meteoric rise to fame, I would never have written to you with such uncareful regard for your feelings. I wanted you to know that you have inspired me to greatness, not to take anything away. I think you were scared of my speaking to you because I compared myself to you. You see, I did not mean to compare my Asperger's to your autism. For as you say, the two are totally and completely different, and are never and have never been the same. The only way I wanted to compare myself to you is that as you are an artist, I aspire to be an amazing artist as well. I hope you will accept my peace offering of Asperchu and Sonichu, meeting as friends that I have attached. Your friend and protege, Alec Benson Leary. He attached this image of Asperchu and Sonichu, exchanging words of friendship. 
while holding hands on the beach. Christian evidently did not accept Alex's apology. Firstly, you wish you were me. And second, I apologize for putting your letter into the reject page, but I felt it necessary because one, you are obviously a troll from what you have typed, and two, your drawing infers homosexuality. And I do not care for that goddamn lifestyle or whatever word is used to describe it. After Wikipedia mail back 10, Christian asked Cogsdev to stop sending him stressful fan mail to answer. Cogsdev chose to ignore this request. On December 5th, Christian uploaded a special season's greetings video onto YouTube. How are the greetings to all in my fan base and all that? Happy holidays and Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Kanukkah, all those fun holidays. Anyway, I'm here. Anyway, I come to you this day to wish you the holiday greetings. I also read to you what I have read the past Sunday before this sun this coming Sunday when I lit the first Advent candle. The Gospel according to Luke. The Gospel of Luke speaks about the future. There will be signs in the sun, the moon, and the stars, and on the earth. Distress among nations, people will faint from fear and foreboding. Because our world is full of fear and distress, we light our first candle, trusting that Christ is alive on earth and that the Spirit of Christ lives among us. We trust you, we love you, we praise you. Amen. And so I lit the first Advent candle at my church last Sunday. Thank you all for your continued support, and we will make the Franchise notorious! Yeah! Happy holidays to all. On December 6th, the troll Jack Thaddeus called Christian over the phone, mostly to berate him for his work ethic, exercise regimen, and his stance on Asperger's. You think that Asperger's, people with Asperger's are trying to take the quote-unquote limelight away from you people with autism. That's like saying that people with cancer are trying to take the limelight away from people with AIDS. Although you'd probably like that, considering you hate the hell mouse. Why they? You know, you know, a friend of mine has AIDS. He's gay. No, that's for him. And he has my sympathy. He has my pity. But, but he's gay, Chris. I know. I, I I assumed that because you know you you said he had oh AIDS. you assume he had, he had AIDS. you assume that everybody that has AIDS is gay. Wow, wow, Chris, wow, that's way to fucking you know fall into the fucking pit of stupid. You know, a lot of people have AIDS, not just gay people. But anyways, I'm pissing you for multiple reasons. First of all, the comic sucks. Second of all, the video you did sucks. You know, Vivian's been yelling at me saying that I'm interfering. I'm interfering. I didn't do shit. Okay? So, you know, that bitch is crazy. So, you know. So, you can, you know, I'm, we're going to have, we're not, I'm not hanging up. We're having our talk right now, Chris. So don't, don't fucking try and rush me, okay? All right. Because I, I can hear you, you know, fucking, Shifting around and, you know, going, eh, 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 like you're fucking getting tortured, okay? You're listening anyway. to a radio in the background. Why? Who the fuck still listens to radio? Oh, no, that's John Tesh. Who the fuck is John Tesh? Sounds like a fag. Anyway. Anyways. Oh, you fucker. Anyways. Um, God. Parkour. You seem to really not understand parkour. What is parkour? Parkour, to my interpretation, being the style of running. Running from one point to another. Yes, with jumps. And mm -hmm. along the walls and other That's, things. Well, yeah. You got then. You got when you had the jumping on walls and shit. It's, but then again, what you said you were doing was parquet. Which parquet is a well, brand of butter. Okay, well, I forgot. I, just, I had trouble remembering settle. what the word was. Chris, settle down. It's not nice to interrupt people. All right. Your parents really failed at teaching you manners. Hmm. Well, please continue. You, you called it parquet. Now, that's hilarious because parquet is a brand of butter. 
and you're like butter, and that you're a fat piece of shit. <sighs> Do you really think that you're healthy? I could be healthier. You could be healthier. Okay, yeah, you could be healthier if your fucking blood wasn't made of gravy. My blood's not made of gravy. It's not. It's not. Then why why do you have to take four fucking breaks in the video just running for 10 minutes? I can run for 10 minutes without a break. And I can then go up a flight of stairs after running 10 minutes without a break and make it to the top, you know, faster than you did. All right, then. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty fucking awesome. All right. Anyways, I want you... To stop rejecting mail that you don't like. Okay. You These are your fans, Chris. You shouldn't be fucking pushing them around like this and acting like, you know, just because they say something you don't agree with, their opinions suddenly don't matter. Okay. Trials and advertisements make you – and trials and adversities make you stronger. Take your problems head on. Do not fucking dodge them. Okay. I just read that from a fortune cookie. Okay. Except I added the fucking part because okay. Chinese people don't curse a lot. Actually, right. they do, but I don't know. They they curse in Chinese something. Yeah. Okay. Now I'm pissed, Chris, because I know what you're doing. You're just – you're not even listening. I remember when you did this with Clyde. You just sit there and just like go, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Do I do a good impression of you? I think I do. Whatever. Remember when, he, remember when he tried to get you to go to Redmond and you didn't go? Right. You didn't go because you don't give a shit about Sanchu. No, I didn't go because I thought it was a trap. How could it be a trap? For what? Well, you think my mom would... thought it was a trap. My dad thought it was a trap. And then we realized that the emails from Mr. Maimoto came from Mail.com, which is where anybody could pretend to be somebody else. Well, yeah, and plus, you know, my family is concerned with my safety, so there you go. Yeah, that's why they shelter you like you're a baby. You know what? My parents threw me out when I turned 18. You know why they threw me out? Mm, probably because they couldn't stand you. Oh, that earns you two more gay ads. You little sassy okay. thingy. Guy, you gonna apologize? Yeah, I'm apologizing. I apologize for that. I'm sorry. Well, they kicked me no. out because I, because you know, I have like five other brothers or something. I don't know. I have a lot of people in the house. Okay, it was overcrowded. Yes. Okay. Just like your house, except it's not full of people. It's full of shit that you don't need. Ah, <laughs> uh, we have fun, don't we, Chris? Mm. Oh, you are anyway. Yeah. And I am not going to interrupt. Anyways, grow some balls, get some initiative, fucking promote the shit out of Sancho. Vivian's yeah. going to rape me with the strap on because she's crazy. Oh, wait, I was reading an email. Um, Yeah. Just do whatever right. Vivian says, and I'll be calling you soon, and you don't fucking abuse your fans. All right. So, any other thoughts? All right. Uh, you're fat. Okay, okay, I guess we're done here? Yep. Bye-bye. Okay. Take care. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to you, fatty fat fat. On December 7th, Christian uploaded the final two pages of episode 20, thusly completing Sonichu issue 9. Episode 20, also known as Quick Defense, begins with some of the supporting characters being awoken by a mysterious whooshing sound, which belongs to Wesley, Reldneck, and Sylvana, whizzing through Quickville, taking a status report before an imminent attack. Meanwhile, Rose Chu is in the garage doing laundry, while Sancho admiringly looks up her skirt as she is bent over and observes her panties. Sancho tells her that he was chatting with some of his fans when some homosexual fans made their appearance. While he states that he welcomes fans of all orientations, he is greatly troubled by the fact that the comics have been misunderstood and thought by many as promoting homosexuality. He declares that almost everyone in Quickville and the surrounding area is straight, including their true creator, Christopher Christian Ricardo Weston Chandler. Rose True offers Sonichu sex, 
but they are interrupted by the crashing sounds of an enemy invasion. The acting mayor of the town, Allison Amber, calls for the help of Quickville's own Power Rangers force and the Samurai Pizza Bots, which are Christian's version of Autobots from Transformers, with their title referencing the anime, Samurai Pizza Cats. These bots are in fact Transformers who are disguised as pizza delivery trucks. Chris then shows several scenes of the other Sonic Chews and Rose Chews fighting off invading jerk cops. Blake and Bubbles then see an approaching army of SAVs, or scoundrels as vessels, which are a type of Decepticlone, based on the enemy class of Decepticon Transformers. They manage to defeat them. Meanwhile, Sonic Chew and Rose Chew take down some more foes as well. Magitan comes face to face with Sylvana, who attempts to reason with her by telling her to withdraw her allegiance to her father, Count Graduan, so that she could lead a true and honest life with her original female gender, fully restored. She declines his offer, so they commence psychic battle. With Sonichu tiring from the fighting, Chris's car, complete with a holographic projection of Christian in the driver's seat, transforms into Sonchu and leads the Autobots into battle to defeat the Decepticlones. The comic then introduces two new characters, Chloe Rosechu and Blaze Bob Sonichu, both originally created by Sarah Cassandra McKenzie, or Panda Halo, who in the comic tragically dies in a fire started by an SAV and is given a brief dedication by Christian. Sonichu then comes face to face with a new Sonichu, IBA Chandler, Liquid Chris's Sonichu form. Sonichu quickly slashes open IBA Chandler's chest with his tail and breaks his paper thin medallion in two which changes him back to his human form. Sonichu duly calls the ambulance to tend to his physical and mental ailments. Rosechu is kidnapped by Robotnik, Giovanni, and Reldnak Natsu Natsurk. Sonichu quickly escapes with Rosechu, while Bionic the Hedgehog makes an appearance and briefly battles Natsurk, who launches his very own curse of embarrassment at Bionic. He deflects the attack and throws it back at Natsurk, who then pees his pants and defecates onto the floor. Sonichu and Rosechu are telepathically called over to the mall by Magichan, who then informs them of several notable events which had transpired in the long wall of text, possibly as a way for Christian to avoid drawing more pages. One of these events was the unfortunate death of Ivy, who was trapped in the elevator when Tremors caused the floor underneath her to collapse, and as she fell, her neck got tangled in the cables, killing her. When Sonichu arrives at the mall, he fights off Slowheel Ryan, who gets fatigued, and retreats with Count Graduan, vowing to fight another day. Sonichu says that he let her go, because only Christian himself can kill her. In the epilogue, the Sonichu spot an opening in the time void, and manage to finally pull Christian out of it. He transforms into Chris Chan Sonichu, tells the others of his yet-to-be-revealed plan, and charges towards the city. On the final page, Chris announces that after his plan is executed, he would no longer insert himself into the story. The comic also includes a disclaimer that Sonichu and Rosechu got married in secret three years ago, and have three children. The next day, Chris began uploading pages for Sonichu issue 10, and also made a new Captain's Log update video. I uh, am looking to my European fans to make donations to the Wikipedia, not only to uh, keep it up, but to help get rid of the god dang it's horrible homosexual pants that that dang jet that he has put on there. <sighs> anyway, donations are greatly appreciated, and as they have uh, noted on there, those who donate over 1,000 euros, place to get to place their ads there, no questions asked. And, uh, as, and with that, I also would like, also am looking for sponsors, and uh, I am looking, I am looking maybe towards the Coca-Cola company for them to, to sponsor the Wikipedia as well as the Sonic franchise. At least the Coca Cola company in the Europe in the European area to make the donation to put their ads all, all over on the uh, Wikipedia ad space. At least to get rid of those god damn. But yeah, Coca Cola. I uh, have an understanding that uh, there may be uh, there are rumors going around about uh, people who about the people who do the animation for Family Guy. Thinking about making a uh, skit in parody in the uh, in the mockery parody of me on the show, but I would like to uh, make it clear that I don't want just a skit. Uh, if you're gonna do anything of me, I would like to be involved and myself 
in the show, as well as a, as well as a statue character. Now, I have my story for at least one episode, and I'm willing to go multiple episodes in agreement with Seth MacFarlane and the crew. I have watched all the episodes of Family Guy, regard, regardless of the way, and uh, I drew a good version of myself, which uh, these drawings I'm going to show on here will be on the Wikipedia a little later on tonight, along with the next page. Anyway, there you go. That's a good version of me right there to draw for the show. And this year's a family guy version of Sonic and Oshu that I drew up. I even wheeled it down and gave me each only four fingers. He then talks about the vague ideas he has for possible Sonic and Family Guy crossover episodes. I am Christian and Chandler. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Another thing I'm not sure I you mentioned in the video. Or just now. If this if this show does go in the process, like I said, I definitely want to voice myself. And Sonic. As for Roshu, I have a gal pal that's uh, I, that is close. That is close, and uh, I trust she's not. But uh, we are good friends, and I feel that she has a great voice. She could voice Roshu very well. I mean that. Okay. Anyway, have a good day. Be safe. I'm a man. And I'm straight, so... On December 10th, Christian answered Mailback 13 on the Wikipedia. The letters, which solely consisted of inquiries from persons who were interested in learning more details about Christian's life, or Christorians, were written as part of an organized information gathering campaign, codenamed Operation Mailbag. Chris's answers were for the most part significantly longer than previous mailbags, addressing, among other things, his relationship with his mother and half-brother, Cole Smithy, and revealing that if he were unable to continue the Sonic 2 comics at an older age, he would pass down that obligation to his child. Chris seemed to have become revitalized with energy, completing another Sonic 2 issue, and continuing to believe in troll-induced dreams of fame and popularity. But as the dust was settling from the conclusion of the Liquid Chris saga, there was someone else rising into Christian's field of vision challenging his life choices, world views, and what it means to be Sonichu.